ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hey there, Matt Petrowski here for ISO FileMaker Magazine. You can always find more FileMaker information at FileMakerMagazine.com or watch the videos here on YouTube. You came here to learn about Get System Platform and where you might be able to use it. Now, this is a super simple FileMaker database where we can see I have added a calculation. This is just FileMaker text, and this is the result right here, one not super helpful. We need to know more. Let's take a look at a database. You can see that I have a calculation. It is a text field and that text field is being used within the calculation. We are evaluating the contents of that text field right there as a calculation. We saw that it's a one and it's not super helpful. Normally what we want to do is we want to do this within the data viewer. That's going to be accessible using the tools menu, but if you don't have this, you are going to need to go to the preferences and you're going to want to make sure that the use advanced tools is selected on the first of the tabs, the general tab. In Windows, you can always access that with the edit menu and it's at the bottom, the preferences. So with the tools, typically we're going to go to the data viewer. It's where we can always sample all of our FileMaker functions. We can see right here, I've already created a watch variable where we have the watch variables. And then down at the very bottom right here, you can see there's a plus. You would click that and you would have instant access to FileMaker's calculation engine without having to create a field and doing all of that in the database. Here we can see we've got the get system platform. We could of course search for just the word platform. Sometimes using the shorter version gets you to the result you want quicker. In other words, I don't have to type get system in order to look through all the systems. I can just type platform. Many times it's the latter part of the function that gets you there really quickly. Now, description returns a number re representing the current platform. Not helpful at all, which means we need FileMaker's documentation or its help. So in the FileMaker application, we're going to use FileMaker Pro help. With a browser open, that's going to open up the help online. Of course, you can download the help if you do a search on Google for download FileMaker 19 or whatever version it is, help. That will give you a good uh, way to get this when it's offline. Down at the very bottom of the first page of the help are two important things, are functions reference and script steps reference. Clicking on function reference, we're not going to use the search feature that's built into the help because we don't want to search the whole help. We want to search on this page, which is a list of all of the functions. And again, we're just going to use command or control F in the browser, start to type platform, and that's going to take us right to the actual function right there. So we click on get system platform, which I've already loaded here. We can see the parameters it expects, which is nothing. We can see that the data type returned is a number. It was released in FileMaker 6, but here is what we're interested in. It returns these right here. In fact, with those highlighted, I'm simply going to copy them, go over to FileMaker, and I am going to be able to use them in a calculation. Now, what are the ways that I could use them? Well, let's head up to that data viewer and let's think about it. We'll go in right here. FileMaker has two different ways that you can actually put a comment into a calculation. You can do one, let me zoom in here again. You can do a line-based comment with the double slash, or you can do what's known as a block-based comment, and that's with a slash star, put in your comment, then star slash, and everything in between these values will not be evaluated, evaluated by FileMaker's calculation engine. So as I take the time to get rid of those extra returns, we can see what we have as a result. Now, unfortunately for this particular function, it looks a little bit odd that FileMaker has the negative here, and this is just because of a historical artifact of when FileMaker or Claris was adding these functions in. The best way to use the get system platform is to actually almost always wrap it with an abs function. So an abs function is going to nullify this negative that comes with Windows. There are, are, there are alternatives as well to the get system platform if you want to make a determination. Look up 
on YouTube, you can say get device is an alternative to get system platform where it will return something more specific, such as an iPhone versus an iPad, if you truly want to know the difference and also determining Android. But in this particular case, this function is useful when we are doing things more or less server side versus client side. Now on the client side of things, the user is either going to be on Mac or Windows or iOS. We can also determine whether they're on the web with WebDirect, but here these latter two actually allow you to determine whether a script is running on the server if it's running on Linux. So in this particular case, by wrapping this abs, we've turned the result to more or less that right there. But remember, what the get system platform is returning for Windows is an actual negative two, just a downside. So safest thing, just always use the abs function. And now we have this right here. How can we use this within the context of a calculation? Well, the great thing about FileMaker is that there's one function that's super helpful as a companion with all results, well, not all, but all of the results that return an incrementing numerical value as a result of determining something, and that is the choose function. The choose function re allows you to, within code, determine what you want to do, and it comes in the form of, you give me a test and then I will actually return a result. So let's take this as the contents of a result and actually just put it right here as our result. And remember, anytime we see the curly braces within a FileMaker function, we know that FileMaker is saying this is all optional. You absolutely have to have that. But in this case, I have all of these results. Well, let's put them in right here and see what it would look like in the terms of code. Remember that FileMaker had this as result zero. Turns out that in all of FileMaker, most things are one, two, three, four, and so on based, but the choose is the one odd function that's zero based. JavaScript is also zero based, which we can use in FileMaker. So in this case, result zero is the first result. So if we take this value right here and we put this in as our test, there's one extra thing that we need to do in order to make it zero based. Remember, if the user is on a Macintosh, it will return a value of one, meaning this will be equal to one. So if FileMaker is using this right here, result one, result two, and this is getting a little bit long now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a return after these and indent them. Make it a little bit easier for myself to read. And we'll put result zero and we'll put result two right there. Now we're going to be replacing this with these actual values. But if you haven't seen it already, what the problem is because this is zero based, we simply need to say whatever the result of this is, if you return a one, in order to get a zero based result, we're going to subtract one. So one is going to say, you're going to be equal to whatever this result zero is. So let's put in those uh, values right here. The easiest thing for me to do is simply, I could swap these in, I could copy this and paste this right here. Of course, I need this to be in quotes and we'll do it for Windows right here. I'll go ahead and do this. I could have also taken the opportunity and just simply selected everything preceding these, deleted it, and so forth. Well, let's comment our code here right within our actual FileMaker calculation and start to get our results. This is the great thing. Um, actually, I should have I had it down here at the bottom again, so I just duplicated it. We'll get rid of that. And result three, what is result three? This is going to be iPad or iOS. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm simply just copying in all of the different possibilities. And you can see right here, this is going to help me understand the use of this. And we'll also take a look at this in the context of a script. Now I'm just going to copy each of these lines and we need to see in particular what we need to do. We need to remember that this is one, two, three. We've got four right here. And we've got this one is five. So this is four, this is five. We cannot keep this one, keep just going and say this is Ubuntu Linux because we can see right here, FileMaker jumps from five to eight for some reason. So we have to have empties. So this would be six, this would be seven. 
These must be reserved. I don't know why this is the case, but then we have this one right here. So let's make sure that we're right. One, if you're Mac. Two, if you're Windows. Three, four, five, nothing for six, nothing for seven. For eight, it would be Ubuntu. So in this case, if I copy my documentation out, make my calculation result clean, this is how I would use this within the context of FileMaker code. And you can see right now, I'm clearly on a Macintosh because abs get system platform is returning a one, one minus one equals zero, which gives me my zero based result of the choose function. Um, I can confirm that by simply saying Mac OS is the coolest. And you can see right there that quite clearly my result obviously updates because automatically evaluate is checked. So how would I use this within the context of a script? Well, let's take a look at that. I am simply going to copy all of this right here and I'm going to monitor that in case I needed to go back. I'm going to go into my scripting workspace with command or control, uh, command shift S or command control S. I am going to say uh, system platform as the name of my script. And here in most cases, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using an if condition. I'm going to paste in what I copied. And here again, I am just going to do exactly what I would do. If equals one. Now I always suggest that you put in a comment. As long as you remember what's going on, we're going to put a comment function right here. Do something on a Mac. And then I have two different options. I could duplicate this whole structure or I can do an else if right here. I'm going to paste in again. And in this case, because of the abs function, I do not have to put a negative two. But if I did not have the abs function, remember, I would have to do this. I would have to say equivalent to a negative two because that is what the function returns. But because we use the abs function, which I'll paste in again, we get equals to two. I will leave myself a comment. Windows, remember, because it's not the choose function and choose is zero based, we simply just go based on the straight up numbers. And again, I would be able to have an else if for all of the different conditions. So three, I believe, was iOS right there. Now, the alternative here, and I'm just going to use just the Windows and the Mac as I get rid of that right there, do something on Windows. This is how you control the direction of the script. The alternative to this method would simply to be multiple if statements. So I'm going to borrow these right here by duplicating them. I'll add a couple of spaces in between, and I would simply just duplicate this. There really is very little difference in terms of the execution. It's simply how the code reads. If you have too many embedded else ifs, it really gets a lot more difficult to read as opposed to just simply multiple conditions. And of course, if I change this here to Windows, then what would happen is this would only be entered. Let's go ahead and duplicate these by selecting them and do something on a Mac here and do something on Windows here. This would essentially only happen in this script if this evaluated true. Otherwise, if they were on Windows, then this would happen. And this is exactly how you would use get system platform. Remember, wrapping it with the abs is the easiest thing to do. Using that choose function is how you can use it within code. I hope this has helped you out. You can find more information about learning FileMaker and more videos here on YouTube. As always, I would like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development. And until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.